What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we got to talk about what happened on this go home episode of Friday Night Smackdown. Shout out to everyone that was a part of the live stream. You guys were amazing, man. I know Dub and uh, Sir Dance a lot would have been there if they could have. But once again, thank y'all so much for all the, the love and support, all the, you know, uh, the condolences that y'all been sending throughout the week. Thank y'all so much. So we got to talk about, obviously, some of the things that happened on this show. This show was kind of a middle of the road for me. Definitely didn't feel like a go home show. There was some good things about it. And there were some things that were kind of lackluster. Um, I'm going to talk about mainly the stuff that was, you know, entertaining and worth your time and attention. Uh, they started off the show with LA Knight. Had a really nice reception from the, the crowd in Berlin. Does seem like we're going to get another good crowd uh for the bash in berlin main ple tomorrow so looking forward to that crowd scene pretty hot tonight considering there were some kind of dud matches in between but the things that they were interested in they definitely showed some energy for uh la knight came out there nice reception he offered his uh u.s open challenge to see who's ready to face him for the united states championship and that's when ludwig kaiser comes out there and this is the first time i've ever seen ludwig get a really good pop from the crowd he essentially came out there as the babyface challenging la knight for the united states championship and all the stuff that he was doing within this match he was getting cheered like the traditional he lined somebody up on the steel steps go on the opposite side of the ring runs all the way around and kicks him into the steel steps crowd went crazy for that spot like he was the baby face essentially in this match since he was like the hometown hero he was in his home country and crowd was loving it and it was cool to see that like he was kind of playing it up and la knight was getting booze because you know people wanted ludwig to uh to win here but ultimately that didn't happen um la knight got the clean win um even though he wasn't going to cheat to win he got it was no interference it was a clean win uh he was able to hit the his finisher uh the bft for the one two three pin still got some booze out of it but i mean overall it was a good opening match and it was cool to see Lewis as a baby face essentially because he's at home so i thought that was pretty dope um to see that so that was a really good opening match next we got to talk about the cody versus kevin owens um you know they're having their their match tomorrow for the undisputed wwe uh championship um but they had their face to face tonight so nick aldis brought out kevin owens and then cody rhodes came out there to a huge ovation uh it was cool to you know see the crowd singing his theme song it was a good moment and he comes out there ko's like so what do you want to talk about you know since i you know i did your little thing there but i like what they did here because I know some people were thinking maybe he's going to turn heel this week, but I'm glad they didn't do that. They've been teasing it, but I'm glad they didn't do that. This was a really good uh, promo between these guys, and it, it started to get a little tense. Not even a little. It started to get really tense. Um, so he, was, he talked about during the European tour, he asked, is your knee good? He started off with that, just to put that out there. Is your knee good? And you know, Cody's like, hey, let's not do this. My my knee is fine. Let's not do this. He he wanted to bring, he brought up their history. He's like, man, we're really good friends. We we are really good friends. Uh, we've been friends for a very long time. You know, there's, you know, I've been in situations, you know, we, we've been in the same room with each other and met the same people. And unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to look at it, you know, I was able to, you know, kind of rise, you know, get get that notoriety and attention. But you were in the same place with me. And I do feel like you deserve that attention and recognition. But I do like the fact that Cody also brought up the fact that last week it looked like you wanted to hit me. And if I didn't turn around in enough time, it looked like you was going to hit me, but you didn't. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, what's going on here. And I love what KO's been saying. He's like, look, I know they showed the promo video package of me turning on people. Everyone that I turned on, 
deserved it. Except Kofi. He looked right into the camera. Kofi, you did deserve that. And I'm sorry. I love the fact that every time he says, I've turned on everybody, they deserved it. Except Kofi. He never deserved that. So I always love that that running little joke there. But he's like, you know what I'm saying? We're friends. We're real friends. You know, and that's not the case. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to turn on you or, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, it's crazy that you would think I would do that. I'm not, that wasn't what I was trying to do. I, I would never do that to you. But then he also starts bringing up that this is eight, the eight year anniversary. It's been eight years since he won the universal championship. And I love that he brought this up. He said, it's been eight years since I won the Universal Championship. And when I won the Universal Championship, people immediately started to say, I only won because Triple H hate, uh, uh, helped me and it tarnished that championship reign for me. And I don't want people saying the same thing about you when I beat you because he wanted to make the point that Cody, you're not good. Your knee is messed up. People were texting me in the back saying, hey, Cody's been in, Cody's limping a lot. Cody's been in the training room a little bit longer than, than normal. Hell, when you went out there to do your entrance, you didn't get on your knee. And I like that. You can hear the oohs and ahs like, oh, he really didn't. I like that they're playing this up, up to something happening while they're on this tour and Cody may not be at 100%. So his... Logic is, I don't want to go into this match and you not at 100% because if you not at 100%, then I don't want no asterisks when I beat you. And then this is thing when things start to really get tense because Cody initially is like, you know, well, hey, man, are you are you are you trying to, you know, say you don't deserve this match? You're like, no, 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 no. It's not that. It's just I don't want that asterisk behind this championship that I'm going to beat you for. And that's when Cody turned up. He said, look, 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 look. I don't, I don't want you to get this mistaken. We are friends, but on Saturday, I'm beating you. There's nothing. <laughs> there ain't nothing to talk about other than I am beating you. And let's keep it clear. Let's be real here. And I, and it was very interesting because Cody was coming off passive aggressive. Like, yeah, we friends, but let's keep it a buck. I can get, he was basically putting off the anger that quote unquote Kevin Owens has that justified anger is like, I understand you being angry because when I came back to WWE, I'm sure you knew things were going to be different. I'm sure you knew what was potentially going to happen. And when I came back at WrestleMania, while you had your main event with Stone Cold, guess who they were talking about? Guess who they were talking about the next night? Cody Rhodes. They were talking about my return. Kind of basically saying overshadowing the main event from uh, night one with Stone Cold and Kevin Owens. I like that because it was kind of condescending, kind of like I'm really better than you. And you know that I'm better than you. And everything that I've done since I've gotten back here proves that. And I get it. It's frustrating. You deserve your accolades and praise. But I'm here now. And this is just what it is. He said, I wish I could take y'all along with me for the ride. But I can't. I, th that was a very interesting promo. It wasn't just typical babyface Cody Rhodes. They had some babyface mannerisms. But it was very interesting. And I like that dynamic. And when it was all said and done, uh, I like how he ended. I like how Cody ended. He's like, you know what? When I do beat you, I have a question I'm going to ask you. The question is, when I beat you on Saturday, will we still be friends? That was really good. And Kevin Owens didn't say nothing. He walked, dropped the mic and walked right past him. So I like this. I like the fact that they're bringing up this injury, which I'm sure they're going to work into this match. That he's not at 100%. And I, I like the fact that Kevin Owens is probably going to target that as much as he possibly can. I, I really do like the fact that Cody seemed a little bit more 
mm, what's the word? I wouldn't say heelish, but more so like braggadocious. Like, yeah, I'm, I know when I came back, you probably were a little bit annoyed or upset because you know how things are going to go and you know what type of mission I was on. So just to basically say, yes, since I've came back, I am better. There's a reason why I am better. So I don't know. I don't know. This was this was very interesting. I like how they did this because at first I was not really interested in this match because it's two baby faces going at it and it seemed like this is just what they had left over to do. But they've definitely they've definitely ramped up my interest these past couple of weeks and I'm really interested to see how it's going to play out. Yes, Cody will win. But the question is, will Kevin Owens turn or will he still remain his friend? That's to be seen. Uh, we also got a bloodline segment uh, where basically um, Solo uh, was saying that a hey, he was gonna the bloodline is gonna take on DIY and the Street Profits. I guess uh, next week on SmackDown they're gonna you know take them on and show their dominance. And he was basically saying if I will will take out Jimmy, my own blood. If I'll take out Paul Heyman, that was part of the bloodline. If I'll take out Roman Reigns, what do you think I'm going to do to y'all? These were my family. These are people I cared about. What do you think I'm going to do to y'all? So, does look like the destruction of the tag team division. I don't know. how. We'll see how that plays out. And then he brought his attention to Cody and Kevin Owens. He's like, Cody, Kevin Owens, whoever wins, it don't matter. Whoever wins that match, y'all got to deal with me because I'm coming for that WWE Universal, uh, not Universal, WWE Undisputed Championship. So basically, he's declaring himself the number one contender for whoever wins out of that match. So we'll see how that plays out. And then finally, um, well, actually, there's a few more things. Uh, the Andrade versus Carmelo Hayes match, really good. They've been killing this. Uh, I'm guessing they're probably going to do a best of seven series. I, I would think so. Uh, but they've been killing these matches. Andrade won the first two. And this time, our Carmelo has won back-to-back -back matches. I do think this feud is going to continue to keep going on. They've been some of the best matches on SmackDown. Love what they're doing with these guys. Giving them some type of back and forth. And we'll see how things play out. I do think they're going to do a best of seven. And it may culminate at Bad Blood. We'll see. Who knows? But that was a really good, enjoyable match. They've been killing it for the past few weeks. So I love what they're doing with Carmelo Hayes and Andrade. And then the uh, the main event, which was Nia versus uh, Mee Chin in a street fight match for the WWE uh, Women's Championship. Uh, beginning of the match, I really didn't too much care for. But towards the end, th there was a situation where uh, Tiffany, Tiffany Stratton comes out there the money in the bank briefcase both women are down and she ends up attacking me chin hitting her with the briefcase but then she looks down at naya then she looks at the ref she has the briefcase the crowd gets electric because they're like uh oh is she gonna cash in it looks like she's about to cash in then naya wakes up and looks at her like what the fuck and then that's when bailey music hit bailey comes out there um and this is after um, when Nia gets up and looking at uh, Tiffany Stratton potentially cashing in. Then she tried to play it off and hits Mi Chin and tries to set her up with a move. To like, oh, I was really helping you. That's when Bailey comes out there, fights off um, Tiffany Stratton through the crowd. Uh, got some uh, good pop from uh, the, um, a crowd out there in Berlin when they saw Bailey. And But ultimately, we knew how this was going to end. Uh, Mi Chin ended up getting uh, hit. I want to say it's a Samoan drop through the table, propped up in the corner. Uh, Nia hit her with a Samoan drop through the table, then dragged her body to the other side of the ring, put her head in the trash can, goes to the second rope, and proceeds to squash her while the trash can is on her head for the one, two, three pin. That was it. She legitimately got squashed. And then at the end of the match, Nia threw a piece of the table on her. It's the trash can legs, the kendo stick, just letting it be known that she's straight garbage. And she retains as we expect. So we will see how they plan this teasing of 
of uh tiffany stratton cashing in because i do think she will cash in on naya it makes sense to do it that way and i do think she will be successful the question is when and i'm glad they're taking their time on it they're building that intense anticipation but hey man this show like i said for me six out of ten it six and a half out of ten middle of the road few things that happened the most entertaining stuff for me was definitely cody ko that promo was really good it definitely seemed a little bit off for cody because he he wasn't the traditional goody two shoes like um baby face he was really talking this shit to kevin owens like i've been the guy you know i've been the guy in every room we've ever been in and i'm gonna be the guy again at bash in berlin the question is will we still be friends after i beat you so he was talking this shit i fucks with it but hey comment down below let me know did you guys enjoy um uh, this episode of smackdown and are you guys excited for bash in berlin tomorrow because i know i am best believe i'm definitely gonna be there we're gonna stream this we're gonna have a good time but i appreciate all love support y'all shown on the channel road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking it with me see y'all next one peace